This is the entirely new Acura Integra Type S. It costs just over $52,000. It's front wheel drive and has 320 horsepower feeding those front wheels. Let's go take it for a drive. Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. and I've been spending the day with this Integra Type S and it might not be a surprise to you that it is fast. It's based off the Honda Civic Type R. Honda and Acura, they know how to make a front wheel drive car be very fast and very accurate and fun to drive. But what's actually surprised me more about the Integra Type S is the other side of the coin, the daily livability and usability of this car. Because yes, not a surprise that it can can carve canyon corners very quickly and very precisely, but things like the fact that you have an entirely usable 24 cubic foot trunk area here with a little place to put your gallons of milk when you go to the grocery store. And if that's not enough, it's got a 60-40 split fold seat set up so you can actually get quite a lot of things in here. I think that's pretty impressive. Although, caveat, you gotta lift things way up over this, uh, this little hump here. So if you're a shorter individual, getting a bag of dog food out of there, that might be a little bit tough. 19 inch wheels for this car and these Michelin Pilot Sport for us tires are quieter. It's quite a compound than what you get on the Civic Type R and I've very much noticed that today. I've really appreciated it. Liken this Orchid interior here. I'm pretty sure that's the name. It's been a while since I checked from this morning, but Apex Blue, pearl paint on the outside, Orchid interior on the inside. A little bit less usable than the standard Integra is the four seat setup. And it should be noted that headroom back here isn't fantastic. At about five foot 10, I'm having trouble leaning back all the way without my head hitting. It's almost as if they could have just figured out how to extend this roof line a little bit more. It would have been that much more usable because unfortunately, as, as it stands, I have a ton of knee room and foot room, but the headroom is, is lacking. So that's unfortunate. Pretty easy to get in and out of it though. Hey, look, an MDX uh, right there. That looks quite good. Let's take a quick peek at the engine because this is a car where it does matter and it looks kind of cool. Two liter turbocharged inline four motor. Like I said, making 320 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. It's a pretty linear horsepower curve, pretty flat torque curve. But this, I mean, look at how clean of an engine bay this is. It's pretty darn impressive. Taking another quick look at the front of this car. Do any of you see uh, kind of Cadillac? Uh, v or black wing appearance in the front here. I'm noticing it from this hood scoop, which is functional, actually has air coming in there. But uh, this thing is muscular, 2.8 inches wider in the front than the standard Integra and like a 3.4 inch wider track in general. It, it, this thing feels like a bulldog pulling along with its front wheels and it's really incredible front differential. At $52,000, you'd expect some nice interior accoutrement and you are certainly getting it. The ELS Studio 3D 16 speaker audio system. We've got a review of that in the normal Integra. It's a pretty strong system, but a little bright for my standards. And some Type S badging all around. Alcantara seat inserts, fake leather interior. But again, getting back to that easy daily drivable usability. I mean, obviously, yeah, we all love to go out and have spirited drives. But what's actually impressed me more about this Integra Type S is that I've driven it around all day and haven't been fatigued. You have a few different drive modes, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and Individual. And starting out here in Comfort, it's got adaptive suspension, so it'll actually make the shocks softer when you're just cruising around like this and then make them stiffer when you go up into Sport or Sport Plus mode. Active rev matching as well, which makes it very easy to change gears either up or down with the six-speed manual transmission and you don't have to blip the throttle to avoid it, giving you that jerking sensation. I mean, sometimes people are into a jerking sensation, but it's really not safe to do that while you're driving. Is that a Lincoln Blackwood? Oh, Chris would be so happy to see that. Hmm, fantastic. So clean. 10 inch digital gauge cluster, five inch head up display, nine inch infotainment screen in the center. I'm not impressed with the infotainment given that in other Acuras and even other Hondas like the Accord, you get a much more impressive system with navigation built in and a really intuitive Google system. This is a much more basic system here. Feels more like a Civic. So 
that is something to consider when you're spending 50 grand, but <laughs> you're spending 50 grand to be able to do that and take off with such an aggressive force. That's pretty fun. But again, you just get up to speed and this thing's pretty quiet inside. No sunroof because that would ruin our center of gravity, but it's, a, it's just been a nice place to spend time. The seats are comfortable, You've got power for the driver, but only manual adjustments for the passenger. Four-way lumber over here for the dryer driver as well. Very easy to use controls as well. Big physical climate control layout, very nice clicks to everything, and easy vents to point at yourself, heated seats. You can even get an optional heated steering wheel from Acura's accessory catalog. Brakes are fantastic. The, the way they bite is not too jumpy, but so confidence inspiring. You essentially have a little bit, about 10% of the first part of the brake pedal that's soft, and then right after that, they really clamp down. You've got Brembo brake calipers in the front, but that's it. No more other Brembo stuff in the car, uh, in the brakes. They're all Honda brakes other than that. So it's like they use just enough Brembo stuff to say that there's Brembo in the brakes, but it's, it's just the front calipers. The shifter also is fantastic. I love Honda shifters so much. It's it's Porsche and then Honda when it comes to shifter quality. And even being a front wheel drive car, the shifter feels great. Going along with that, the clutch throw is really nice too. It's a good weight. I'm not a fan of the clutch pedal feel in the Civic Si and the normal Integra because it's nearly an on and off switch. It's so easy to push that it's either on, off. It's hard to get that nice progressive bite feel, but you get that more in this car. It feels really nice. The whole, the whole powertrain feels more proper. I'm not a big fan of that 1.5 liter in the standard Integra, but I like this one. The engine could go with a little bit more character, but they have worked on that a bit. They've done their best. They fitted the Type S Integra with a bespoke exhaust system. So you still have the triple exit in the back like the Civic, but this one has a little bit different muffling. And they've programmed in some pops and burbles. It's not always the easiest to make them happen. Let me see. There we go. Ooh, they get a little gunshot back there. It's just enough to be kind of fun and it's not always predictable. It's not like the Hyundai Veloster N, the Elantra N that you can just make obnoxious noises all day long with. It's It requires uh, actually driving the car really and, and experiencing it to be fun like that. Not a big fan of the golf ball material around the steering wheel, but I understand that if your hands are getting sweaty, it's good to have little places for the sweat to go, I suppose, help you grip onto the wheel, but I would prefer just a nice smooth leather to grab onto. But I do like the size of the wheel, the dimension is good, and the thickness of the wheel that you grab itself is, is I like it. I like it. It's not thick and chunky like a BMW steering wheel. And the controls are easy to use as well. You got a volume rocker over here, track selection, and your adaptive cruise control with Honda's much improved lane keeping assist. One thing that is kind of silly to me is this wireless device charger. If I put my phone on it, which is not gonna necessarily wirelessly charge right now because I have it plugged in, but this iPhone mini with no case, yeah, I know, I'm bold, it slides around everywhere. It stays on the wireless charger for, oh, about five seconds until I take the first slight corner around town and then it's not charging any longer. In fact, even worse, there's a, a slippery caution sticker right here. So yeah, you've got some grippy material on the back, but the iPhone hits this, caution sticker and then it just slides right around so not a great design for the wireless device charger bit of a pet peeve fortunately you do have USB-C and USB-A up there although only the USB-A port is used for data but I also like the nice big cup holders here with a little bit of center console storage space it's it's just a nice place to be in and I could simply be in this car all day I could do some sort of road trip hit some curvy roads in the middle and, and continue on my road trip and be totally happy in here and comfortable and have the creature comforts that I want and need. And that's what's important to me at $52,000. I mean, you can make a sports car for much cheaper than that, but what Acura's done is they've made a lifestyle car. And 
That, uh, that is something I could get behind. I took a Civic Si, a 10th generation Civic Si, on a trip from Michigan down to Tennessee to the Tale of the Dragon. And I, I didn't love driving the car. There were so many little annoyances with the fake engine noise and the seats not being very comfortable and and the the clutch situation not being fun to use. It just, it was a car I was ready to be done with. Not only that, but the sound system was awful. None of those compromises are happening here in the Integra Type S. It's, it's a full package vehicle and I really like that. Free of construction, let's hit some Sport Plus. speed stability is really impressive in this car as well. Acura has done a lot of work in the aerodynamics all around the vehicle, top, bottom, and sides, to make this thing feel stable at speed. I'd really love to have it out on a track. I think it'd be quite fantastic. I've had the Civic Type R out on track, courtesy of the Topher, and that was really impressive. The precision in this chassis and the, uh, the cleverness of the front differential, the ability to turn hard into a corner, get on the accelerator, and not have the inside wheels spin out, even with traction control off, is really an engineering feat. Quick opportunity for a little zero to 60. There's a fun sensation when you get this into some tighter corners where, again, that bulldog effect comes in and the front wheels just yank at you. You feel the steering wheel getting pulled away. It's really impressive, the, the combo of the grip, the diff, and the engine, and the transmission. I mean, they all work together in harmony to create a charismatic driving experience. And charisma is something that's getting harder and harder to find these days in cars. Exploring this road here. Painted Cave Road outside of Santa Barbara. Looks kind of cool. Ah, and a Land Rover has broken down. That's uh, not incredibly surprising. Ooh, that is a cool view. <laughs> ah, this is just the right amount of power. Even low down too, that's that's a big difference between this and something like a normal Integra is even your low down passing power is good. You don't have to be in just the right gear to pass somebody on the highway or on a two lane road or something. No, you can leave it in fourth or fifth or sixth gear and you've got enough power down low to pull out. Boy, this is fantastic. Look at that view. First gear. See, 
this is what I love about the Integra Type S is these are the type of sort of exploring trips you can do. I mean, look at this. This is fantastic. And this could take you hours to drive to. I mean, you could have to drive all the way across the country to get to this, but in the Integra, you can do that. I mean, it's it's going to be a comfortable, nice place to be for that entire cross-country drive, and then you're going to get in these twisty roads and have a great time. Slide area, huh? Well, no handbrake. Can't do that. Could you imagine if you had an Airbnb or something up here, and you were showing up in the middle of the night, and you're like, what in the world? You got some big camper or something like that. Uh, this is epic fantastic little area up there and then you come down and you look over the Pacific Ocean outside of Santa Barbara here. It's so cool, especially with the clouds today. It's broken over the water. All right, I think this is going to be just about one of the coolest places we can stop and end this video. There we are. Electronic parking brake. And there is the first look at the 24 Acura Integra Type S. This is a great all-arounder. That's what I am most happy to report. Little steep, $52,000, but I really can't think of much more on the market that gives you a daily driving experience like this on top of the athletic driving experience. You could take it to the track, you could take it on a road trip, and it's going to do it all better than its Honda counterpart and a lot of the other type of cars like this on the market. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the Integra as a whole, I'll throw the link in the description. We got our sound system test and the videos we've shot on the normal car. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.